Welcome back to Cocktails and Classics. This week we watched Paul Thomas Anderson's Boogie Nights, a 1997 drama film. Joining me this week, our first uh, Cameronless episode, who's, you know, he kind of brings the podcast together, really. He He's what inspired us because he hasn't seen many classic films. But uh, I'm Dylan. With me is Zach and Ben. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Uh, don't forget about our special guest later in the episode. We have Bill Simmons coming on yep. to talk about Boogie uh, Nights. We tweeted at him, got his attention, and he will be here later. <clears throat> so tune in. Are we about to be a Ringer podcast? <laughs> this is our audition, man. <laughs> they heard the Jurassic Park episode and loved it. <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be like... Um, Jimmy Kimmel. We're like, oh, sorry, Matt Damon. We just ran out of time. We'll get you next week. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Bill. <laughs> to kick things off and get everybody in the right mood, we're going to go to our cocktail, which is a, a real classic here. Um, just a plain old margarita. It's ordered once, I think, in the movie. Making margaritas. Definitely Do you want once. one? Do you squat? How much do you squat? About 200. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I do 350, so. Do you bench? What? <laughs> Three, 350. Do you bench? Yeah. How much you bench? You first. Oh, I asked you first. <laughs> Let's say it together at the count of three. One, two, three. We didn't say anything. Uh, neither did you. <laughs> Getting our recipe from uh, liquor.com. It's two ounces of Blanco tequila, half ounce of orange liqueur, so a triple sec, or dry curacao, uh, one ounce lime juice, half ounce of agave syrup, garnish with a lime wheel, and you can salt the rim, get a little fancy. It's just a real, like I said, it's a classic drink, but it, it is like birthed many variations, um, whether that's like flavors um, just completely different cocktails, but you have the same like roots. Margarita is just a great drink to have in your repertoire. You always got to keep some tequila in the in the in the bar at home. It's just one of those cocktails that's perfect. You know, you can add a little bit, you can take a little bit away, but it's just a great cocktail. Yeah, um, I don't think there's much that needs to be said. You know, if you haven't had a margarita at this point, stop. Pause this podcast. Drop. Shut it down. Open up shop. Go make one and come back. Um, and make it the right way. Don't use one of those like pre-done mixes. Because that's, no, yeah. no. that's just sugar. Just, just you know, I did mine three ingredients. Tequila, triple sec, lime juice. Nice little three to one ratio. Three tequila, two triple sec, one lime juice. Boom. Filled up his tumbler and he's ready to go for this episode. Make a margarita. Check the show notes below. We'll have a link to it for you. You should already know how to make one. If you, if you listen to the cocktails and clay, I'm surprised we actually haven't done one yet. I had to go back. Shocking. I was like, I was like, man, have we done a margarita? And then it's it's perfect. We didn't. Correct me if I'm wrong, audience. Tell me I'm a shit stain. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we have not. Even after I went through every episode. <laughs> It worked out perfectly for, for Bookie Nights, where it's not necessarily pivotal, but it is mentioned and drank multiple times throughout the film. Send us a picture at Cocktails and Classics Pod on Instagram. Tell us what you think of margaritas. Are you one that doesn't really like tequila? I know that's kind of a, it's, it's a decisive. It's not as decisive as vodka, I'd say, but. I will say it was good to get some kind of a, a new, not a new, but show a different a different liquor a little bit of love i feel like we've been uh gin and whiskey heavy throughout our run sprinkled yes. in a little bit of some other stuff but i really feel like we don't do enough bourbon maple syrup based drinks <laughs> you can check out boogie nights on hbo max right now if you haven't seen it we're about to spoil it so there's your warning uh boogie nights is a 1997 film it's a drama from Paul Thomas Anderson, written and directed by, stars Mark Wahlberg, Julianne Moore, Burt Reynolds, John C. Riley, Don Cheadle, Heather Graham, 
William H. Macy, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, rest in peace. Love that guy. Louise Guzman. Who else am I missing? Uh, did you say Heather Graham? Yep. Yes. Thomas Jane, uh, who is the first punished, the first, well, not the first big screen punisher, I guess the second, uh, but from the that punisher movie. That was Thomas movie the, Jane? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. The guy that Dirk and Reed start hanging out with, that's the dancer. You uh you forgot about and film star great Nina Hartley. I I feel who like I don't she, know who that is or uh, who I'm, if I'm she, supposed to. She was Lil Bill's wife. Ah, yeah, she gotcha. played William H Macy's wife, and she was a very decorated film actor. She has like almost 700 credits to her name on IMDb. That's all porn. Um, I yeah, that's yeah. all porn. <laughs> okay. What about okay? What about uh? <laughs> An actor from one of the first movies we did this time plays another small-ish part, Mr. Alfred Molina, as the uh, drug dealer that they try to rob at the end. Okay. He was Who was he? he was Dr. Octopus in Spider-Man 2. And, okay. And he was in Indiana Jones... He's the guy who tries to double cross Indiana Jones in the very beginning. Mm, yes. Okay. Okay. The thing about Paul Thomas Anderson is that he usually works with the actors again. Because looking at Alfred Molina, he was also in Magnolia. John C. Riley's in a few. Philip Seymour Hoffman is in a few. I'm pretty sure Julianne Moore's also in Magnolia. I I did a little bit of reading. Um, shame on me. Uh, Not I gonna get read shame this week for some reason. <laughs> I read about the fact that supposedly Paul Thomas Anderson and Burt Reynolds did not get along while doing this movie, and then hmm. uh, later on, Paul Thomas Anderson reached out to Burt Reynolds about doing another movie. I don't remember which one it was, and Burt Reynolds was like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> he was 100 percent just like no i'm not doing it and then later came out and said oh no i have nothing like no it was a great movie it was a fantastic movie it was like mm, i feel like you're saying this now because you don't you don't want to start shit 20 years later but like <laughs> yeah there were reports of like fists being thrown at one point on set between those two have you guys seen any other paul thomas anderson films i, I don't know i don't know that i have magnolia the master there will be blood uh, inherent vice um what's that one with uh joaquin phoenix that's inherent vice my bad um yeah, heart eight now. i don't think so you, you we should do some more like i wanted be blood is i've wanted fantastic. to watch there will be blood i've heard a lot of really good things um especially with magnolia is really good if you like those like broken timelines and stuff Oh man, we should do Punch Drunk Love, another chapter in the Sandler verse. Well, watching this one, uh, I was reminded of Punch Drunk Love because the part where Don Cheadle gets his like store and they do that like goofy like fake commercial, they also do that in Punch Drunk Love, and I'm pretty sure he does it in a, another one. Like that's like part of his like calling card is those like goofy like local commercial type things. I just want to say I loved that, like, once it flashed behind the curtain, that it was um, Amber directing it. Because the the fucking line he says... <laughs> come inside us. Yeah, he's like, get on all fours and come inside us. <laughs> it's just like, what? <laughs> oh my god. Before we get too far into it, Boogie Nights is the story of... Uh, IMDb says, when ba back when safe was... <laughs> Back when sex was safe, pleasure was a business and business was booming. An idealistic Boom, porn man. producer aspires to elevate his craft to an art when he discovers a hot young talent. He was nominated for three Oscars. Best Actor in a Supporting Role for Burt Reynolds. Best Actress in a Supporting Role, Julianne Moore. And best Writing, Screenplay, written directly for the screen for Paul Thomas Anderson. Did not win any of them, though. Currently sits at a 7.9 out of 10 on IMDb doesn't make the top 250 i think you have to be above like an 8.1 so this is your first times both both of you yes my yes first it time, is. yeah so zach knew that bill simmons our guest featured later in the episode loves this movie but you've never given it a shot 
Never seen it myself. I was supposed to go to his house and watch it together with him, but then COVID happened and, you know. Yes, yeah. We had, we had scheduled this pretty early on in our uh, in our life. Of we knew we were doing classes. Boogie Nights a while ago. You know, we did Jurassic Park and Airplane, and we're like, all right, we need to do Boogie Nights, and we have to beat the Rewatchables podcast to do it. So we, we planned it out, and then, you know, everything was going to line up, and then COVID happened, and... Really, it really screwed us up. It cost us. It cost us. It cost us our Ringer podcast. <laughs> what did you guys think of Boogie Nights? Um, I know it uh, takes a, a little bit of a twist there. About an hour and ten minutes in, really starts to not be so humorous <laughs> for a while. It takes a turn, less of a Full Metal Jacket turn, but you know it's the it's the rise and fall of man. Honestly, this movie is. It's basically 2001 A Space Odyssey, but redone and more digestible. Hmm. That is a new take that I don't think I would have expected to ever hear ever uh, about a movie about the porn industry. <laughs> um, much like uh, much like the David Bowie song, this is the rise and fall of uh, Dirk Diggler. <laughs> <laughs> it, what a great name, by the way. Honestly... When you read the synopsis and you you hear that it's a movie about a porn star and kind of like a producer, you don't expect the story that you get out of it. Like it's it kind of blew me away the fact that they did such a good job of making this a character driven movie and it being something that, yes, they're in the adult film business, but it's really more so a story about the people um kind of like a like an outcast family really yeah when you think about it you know jack's the dad amber's the mom reed and dirk are like you know siblings brothers whatever roller girl is the stepsister yeah (laughs) (laughs) um yeah (laughs) the family (laughs) dynamic doesn't really work because julian moore like the whole movie is like oh he's like my adopted son but also i we make out and have sex sometimes but i mean not like okay doesn't that register (laughs) but i mean just in general it feels more like a like a tight-knit thing than full of more like outcasts than it just being about people who show up to work have sex and leave um yeah, and it kind of establishes itself like that at the beginning, I think. Yeah. Because you, you meet everyone first, and then it's like, and here's Eddie or, or Dirk. Because it's that long, uh, like, kind of almost four-minute shot. like Following a, through the nightclub. I, yeah, like a Goodfellas Yeah, the ode. Cabana shop part two. Yeah. Yeah. Which PTA kind of keeps that going through all of his movies, but... Yeah, there's multiple in this movie where it's like really long, steady cam shots through everything, um, and you really get it in the in the beginning, where it doesn't cut for like four minutes, and it introduces each character that's gonna go on with you through the rest of the movie, except for William H Macy's character who doesn't make it all the way. Yeah, that no. really um, that scene kind of as you leave, which was really well done. You know, you kind of get this giant, this life is great, we're on top of the world, yada, yada, yada. And then it's, you know, it's the 70s. And then right as you kind of start to hit 1980, uh, it literally starts with a bang, which is a double entendre. Uh, Actually, it's like a triple. You've got the New Year's theme, the gun theme, and and the sex. That's what we're into. Wow. That's triple entendre. Boom. Boom. Yeah. William H. Macy, for, throughout the first half of the movie, just gets cucked into oblivion. And it's, <laughs> it's the, that's the downfall of man. That's where the story starts to go south. There's so, there's like so much humor, like insider humor to me as well. Not that I work in porn, but there is. Anymore. Um, <laughs> but, just don't look uh, at his credits. What is, what is the character's name? The the like camera guy. Oh, Kurt. Kurt Long John. <laughs> his his whole character is so funny to me when he's like talking to like little Bill 
and he's, and he's like, hey, like, I I was trying to get this Zoom lens, and I just, like, wanted to get your take so we can, like, order it and have him pick it up for the shoot tomorrow. Little Bill's like, dude, I, I just watched my wife. She has a, a dick in her butt, <laughs> and, like, I don't want to talk about the shoot. <laughs> and then, like, when they're on set, and uh, <laughs> and Kurt, uh, Burt Reynolds is like, how long is it going to take? He's like, uh, you know, 15, 20. He's like, why? He's like, oh, there's some really tough shadows I have to get out. And Bert's like, there's shadows in real life, baby. <laughs> it's just like all that stuff is like so like insider humor where it's like it takes forever to make a movie. And it's always like, all right, how long is this going to take to do this one thing that we need to change? Uh, five to ten. All right. Can we make it three? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> he, uh, William H. Macy slips up in that that line, by the way. He says... Um, his wife has an ass in her cock, not a cock in her ass. <laughs> he does. Um, it's on. They the recorded IMDb that as like the too. first take. Yeah, he's he's he screwed up the line, and Paul Thomas Anderson was like, "You know what? He's frustrated. Sounds good. Let's leave it in." My wife has an ass in her cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this movie. Which you don't I've want. Seen it once I mean, you before. don't want that. No, you don't. That that would be uncomfortable. I feel like. Um, for some, yeah, I guess, I guess it depends. <laughs> it depends on two things, really. Um, There's two variables at play. I I'd, I'd seen this movie once before, and I I knew it took that like downturn, uh, where it gets kind of like real. It's like, hey, this was the fun part of porn. Now we're gonna get into the real talk, where everyone's doing coke and they're all tripping and they don't want to leave the room and. Hey, I'm not that great of a mom, so I can't see my kids. And I'm going to start sucking dick in the parking lot because I'm done with porn because I broke all my ties in the industry. And also, I spent all my money on blow, so I can't afford the uh, tapes for the demo tapes for, for the my shitty demo career. I made. <laughs> yeah, it was so fucking bad. However, I will rough. give I will give credit. Reed Rothschild wrote some pretty uh spicy music the vocals were just trash <laughs> which i think i mean both of those men had musical careers too like i think john c oh. riley is in a band and well Mark john Wahlberg c riley's is... done like i know he would he did like chicago and he's done a lot of different like singing things throughout his career he's extremely talented walk hard the dewey cox story the dewey oh that's cox right story, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, so yeah, it's funny that they like had to be purposely bad. Purposely for bad, this, yeah, for the scene. Well, do we know if Mark Wahlberg was good at singing? Um, I mean, he was more of a rapper. I mean, his brother was in New Kids on the Block, so yeah, Donnie. Wait, were they Donnie good at singing? Donnie, I mean, Donnie and the New Kids. Donnie, they were fucking great. I did see Marky Mark <laughs> has a new show snot. called Wall Street. <laughs> Oh, oh no. God. On HBO. I got Fucking an ad for hell. that before I watched Boogie Nights. Jesus Christ. Um, it's so it's about it? him expanding into businesses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, about all the Wahlburgers? No, no, no. Other businesses. He's like, oh. I, knew bu- I knew burgers got me into business, so now we're going to Wall Street and with like an H. Like, I wish I could make a shitty burger food <laughs> chain and then just blow up from there, buy other businesses and stuff. You mean? I mean, because your brothers, plural, both brothers are super famous, and you're just kind of the black sheep of the family. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden you're gonna get super famous because you make hamburgers and you have the last name Wahlberg. That would be so cool. I love Don Cheadle's character. Buck oh, yeah. Buck yes, Swope. Buck, Buck Swope. <laughs> One is like the first time you see him in the record store and he's trying to sell the stereos he has no idea what the fuck he's talking about and then he starts playing the country <laughs> music <fidelity. laughs> and then just his whole like character arc you know he every time he's there at a party he's just like sitting by himself <laughs> like just kind of a... <laughs> oh yeah he looks like rick james he's got like the rick james wig did you guys catch when he was uh, the the opening scene when you meet Buck and he's trying to sell that that um, high fidelity system? Did you catch what, the name of the transmitter he was trying to upsell the guy on? It was a, a TK four two one, which 
I mean, Nerd Alert was one of the Stormtroopers calling cards in A New Hope. Wow. When, when wow. Luke and Han Solo get into the the Death Star. Like, come in, TK421. Come in, TK421. There's oh a couple God. Star Wars references in this movie. Hmm. Well, yeah. Like hey, Johnson man, did you see that Star Wars? <laughs> yeah, like four times. This, this movie, that scene took place just a couple years after Star Wars. Imagine being alive back then, guys. That would be ancient. Right? Sorry, I downloaded TikTok. Everybody's old to me now. <laughs> Fucking boomers. Everyone tells me I look like Han Solo. <laughs> yeah, that one too. Really? <laughs> uh, they're, they're, like, their first meet when everything they do, Reed tries to just, <laughs> just tries to be better, and he just fails epically every time. He goes to he do the jackknife, like, and he just lands <laughs> flat on his back. Everyone's like, oh, God. <laughs> Are you okay? Dude, yeah. I thought he was seriously injured. I'm you're, like, oh, this is where the movie's gonna turn. He's gonna, like, jackknife and, like, break his legs or something. Your, your legs didn't go all the way around. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, fun fact about Burt Reynolds. Uh, Burt Reynolds uh, auditioned for the part of Han Solo. Hmm. Did not get he, it. It was something... Was it Indiana Jones as well or something? No, that was Tom Selleck. You're thinking Tom of Selleck, the other the famous... Mustache. Yep, you're thinking of the other famous mustache. Okay, I, I know I said rest in peace. I, I do love Philip Seymour Hoffman and, like, everything I've seen him in. His character in this movie, it's just, it, it gets me so sad sometimes. Especially, like, at New Year's when he tries to kiss friggin' uh, Dirk Diggler. He's, like, the whole time he's, like, been flirting and hitting on him. And yeah. then he, like, makes his move. And he's just like, dude, what what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Sorry. Like, I did I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. But do you like oh, my car? Because I'll take it back. I was like, man. I, just, I wanted to make sure you thought my car was cool. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, and the scene at the end with him in his car, like, fucking idiot, fucking idiot. They let him go for so long. Yeah, yeah that was like, that was good. And then I like the fact that he leaves with the other two. And then right before they're about to go, well, at the time, they think they're just going to go sell the fake drugs. Little do they know. Uh, that they're going with Todd to rob someone. Where he's like, I just, I don't know, man. I think this is a bad idea, man. And they just, they treat him like shit the entire time. And all he's trying to do is take care of his friends. Yeah, like he's like, uh, he's kind of just like a utility guy, to be honest. Because like, even on set, you know, he's like running the audio and like just doing any of the tasks that they need, really. He's kind of like a glorified PA. On yeah, porn, but yeah, it's like he goes to get he, the he just kind of like walks into the party late and stuff, and like ah, oh, Scotty, yeah, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, oh, Scotty, hey, you're you're here. All right, tell me, is the movie better or worse? Because this man auditioned for the part. Um, if Jack Black plays Scotty, I I, oh, I say ahead. worse. Um, I mean. I think Philip Seymour Hoffman is the better actor. I think Jack uh, Black's too funny. I think it would have been interesting to watch, but I think that scene where he he sits in his car and just like literally has like a breakdown, I don't know that Jack Black would do that as well as Philip Seymour Hoffman. No, I that think, seems what I'm concerned I about. I think he would have been would come off funny. I think he would have been like more of a comic relief character. Yeah. Um Throughout the movie, I think he could have been used, you know, to kind of break a little bit more tension. But that that one scene, which really, let's be honest, is Scotty's scene in the movie. I, I don't know if Jack Black gives that what Philip Seymour Hoffman gave it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, Jack Black is good. I think he could also do the part, but I think it would be a completely different part. I, you know, I, he might even be able to do it. Like, Jack Black is, a, like, a, a good actor. We just know him for, co like, comedy. Yeah. He might still be able to do that that scene, but I feel like it, it is, he is more, like, humorous, like, comedic actor, though. Which I which will say. he has humor. Which I will say, too, though. Philip Seymour Hoffman, in the movies I've seen where he's done, like, comedy, is great at it. Yeah. Uh, something I forgot to mention when you brought up Kurt Longjohn. Uh, he's played by uh, Ricky Jay, who is like a really famous magician. Um, 
there's a ton of like DVDs, um, I guess they were VHSs back in the day, way back when, about how to do like cardistry and sleight of hand at, at table games. And uh, Ricky Jay's really good at it. He's really popular in the magic community. So shout out for my, my magic bros that are listening. Not those loser Magic the Gathering people, but the, the card magic people. Man, the colonel. Uh, wow, what a what a turn. Ooh. Big oof. Ooh. Big oof in a jail cell. Yeah, man. I I mean, I feel like he, he was never gr- a great character. They're like, oh, yeah, this guy has the money. Brings the girl to the party who, without stepping into the party, is like, you guys got coke here? And then is uh, bleeding from the nose and OD'd. And they're like, yeah, go dump her off at the... At the hospital. Place. Yeah. Don't and let him see like, the limo. Yeah. And then it later it's like, I have a weakness. Okay. Yeah. Please don't tell me about that. Please don't. Yeah. Please, please don't I get like, me on the same level I, with you. I did like at the end of the movie, uh, when you see him in prison and he's just getting smacked around. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Shut up, Colonel. Uh, I do think Burt Reynolds is great in that scene, though. Just watching him, like, going from concern, we're going to get you through this, to just breaking down, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I know this guy. You didn't do anything, right? No, no, I didn't do anything. No, we just went, and she did coke, and she must have just done so much of it. Okay, but you didn't do anything. No, no, but they, they, they found, they found stuff. It's like, oh, God. He just Here yeah and he's like are, are you my friend just just tell me you're my friend and then like he turns off the phone and he's like like tap it on the glass like tell me you're my friend another scene where they just let it hang and it's just gut-wrenching dude uh how about the soundtrack in this movie oh yeah. fire so so great uh dude and it's used so well with, like, the script, too. Like, like in the movie. Um, because it's always just, like, in the background or, like, enhancing it. I think one that was surprising to me, the way they used it. I've never felt more tense during such, like, an upbeat song than when they're at, uh, they're at, like Rahad Jackson, the drug dealer, they're there to sell the drugs. Oh, yes. And sister, oh, yeah. sister Christian is playing, mm-hmm. and it's just like I've oh, the never, firecrackers. I've never felt so tense hearing Sister Christian before. Is it just well? Like, and then it's like Jesse's girl. Yeah. And then it's like loft balloons, and I'm like, I'm like, this scene is so tense. <laughs> and you yeah, picked, like, for the, the three for the music that are like the songs. three softest songs and it's just like what what is going on and you're there and you're hearing it and yeah just i i kept waiting for like when it was gonna drop the do 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 motor in i kept waiting for that to be like the drop when something was going to happen and instead like they're just sitting there and he's about to like take the stuff out and try it and then he just stands up and you're like, oh shit, what's about to happen? And he just gets into it. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> then he pulls out the gun. And you're like, shit's about to go down. And then he plays Russian roulette with himself. And then the song's Everyone's just like, like... No, stop, please stop. And then the song just like stops. And it's like, oh, okay, wow. I can't believe they're going to get away with this. Jesse's girl starts playing. And yeah, the the just the, the tension with the three least tense songs of all time was just so well done i i was the thing, shocked watching that the thing that gets me is at the beginning of the scene you start hearing firecrackers and they show you a close-up of these guys throwing fire firecrackers inside and you just know like okay they're doing a drug deal there's firecrackers there's this popping noise there has to be gunshots at some point And, like, that kept me on the edge of my seat every time I heard one of those firecrackers go off. Especially when the guy's playing Russian roulette and they cut away from him. I'm like, oh, he just blew his head off. And then there's ultimately the gunfight. Which uh, is based on a a real story, by the way. Uh, I have to dig up the porn star's name, but um, they they made that scene based off of um, accounts of that crime scene. Ended up being, like, four murders. 
I wanted to give a shout out to Roller Girl, who originated, like, the Croc stay on during sex. Or the Halo Master Chief helmet stays on during sex. Just with roller blades. Oh, wait. Who keeps their Crocs on? Mark Wahlberg has it. Uh, everybody, first of all, you should. Um, traction, basically. <laughs> Just kick them into four-wheel drive. <laughs> But roller girl, she's like down the, flip down yeah. the tab behind the heel. Yeah, kick the heels <laughs> in. Four wheel drive. Good to go. Fucking heelys. <laughs> I get those heelys going. I need Man, my Dirk... heelys for my feelies. <laughs> Dirk Diggler asked her, like, "Are you gonna take off your roller skates?" She's like, "The roller skates stay on." <laughs> oh, all right. Apparently, Paul Tom Sanderson has said that there is no character arc in the film. He said that it doesn't really matter here. Everybody's the same. Maybe if there is a change, it's like one degree. Maybe you see a 90 degree change in a movie. To me, they're all pretty much the exact same people as they were in the beginning of the film. I think with the exception of like Mark Wahlberg's character, I can see that. Because he definitely becomes more like egotistical. He starts but at out the super end, like, chill. Alfred Molina had never heard Jesse's girl or Sister Christian. That's wild. That's insane. Um, it says, the London-born actor played drug dealer Raha Jackson supposedly based on Eddie Nash, and during the firecracker scene, he sings along to two 80s classics. When I said yes to the part, they sent me those two songs. I knew neither of them because neither was released in England. So I had to sit down for like three days on my own playing those songs over, over, and over so that I knew them backwards because they became so emblematic to the character. Hmm. Not a bad way to spend three days, I guess. God, Wahlberg owns his prosthetic appendage. Yeah, he said it's the only movie prop he ever kept from a set. Is the giant wiener. Yeah, he said he might auction it off to a charity one day, if there's enough interest, you know. Bill Simmons <laughs> sweeps in. Bill Simmons actually might buy Whoa! the donor. Whoa! <laughs> oh, thanks, Bill. I didn't know you were still here. <laughs> I just can't get that audio over like the the final scene when he whips it out. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Can the Instagram ad be the last scene in the movie when when Mark Wahlberg whips out his giant wiener, but just overlay Bill Simmons' head over top of the wiener so it's safe for work? <laughs> sure. He'd love that. He might. Paul Thomas Anderson spent a year hanging out with Ron Jeremy to research the film. Jeremy was originally going to have a cameo in the film that got cut, which entailed being in a prison cell with the colonel. Jeremy told The Independent that during the film's production, he invited Anderson and the cast to, quote, a lot of my sets, but Burt Reynolds never came. He said, I know porn. I don't need to see that. <laughs> but it's different, man. Oh, you know who I read um, almost got the role of Roller uh, Skate Girl? Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. I imagine that. To, and to be um, who was the other... Um, God, I feel bad. Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow almost got I heard back. she was offered the role. Get that goop-selling chick that. out of here. We would have resented the movie more now if Gwyneth Paltrow was in it. But Drew Barrymore was like America's sweetheart. She couldn't. She be still a, is. A porn she's got star. her own oh. morning talk show. Yeah. Yeah. She's basically turned into Rachel Ray. Also, did you guys know Robert Downey Sr. was in this movie? I yeah. Did... He plays the record executive, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing reading the list of actors that were considered for the role of Dirk Diggler, Jason Lee. Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Ethan Hawke all considered for the role. What's amazing to me is that this was his second like feature length movie. And oh yeah, have all of these people in here. Granted, like well, some of them weren't at their peak yet, but it's like such an ensemble cast. Yeah, no, it's it's insane. It's also just crazy, like the balls. For your second you like them, really. major motion picture to be about the porn industry and to just like, I'm gonna sell this movie, and also I'm like 26 years old and I'm gonna make this super successful movie about the 1970s porn industry. It's like what? And and no one like people bought the movie. Like it would be one thing if like Spielberg's like you know what I want to make a movie about. <laughs> 
it's another thing to have a kid who's like 26 years old walk in and be like this is what i want to make a movie about we're gonna do it like oh okay so this week's podcast is brought to you by surfside sips they make high impact glass straws they're a family-owned company and and what's better than saving saving the turts you know the turts (laughs) the turts (laughs) You know, I'm one of those people who hates using paper straws. Paper straws fucking Paper straws suck. suck. I love the worst what solution. they do. I love the, that we're, we're minimizing the use of plastic straws. I enjoy that. Paper straws suck ass. They suck. They're the worst possible solution because, turns out, guess what? Paper and water don't fucking mix, okay? I don't know who came <laughs> up with it, but it doesn't work. Even though, even though they put coating on it to try and help, it doesn't work. It just gets soggy, and you end up throwing it away anyway, and that's just more waste. And so, But you know what doesn't get soggy? Glass. Yeah. Glass straws from Surfside Sips. And if you want to get some glass straws from Surfside Sips, you can use coupon code Cocktails and Classics spelled out. That's Cocktails, A-N-D, Classics, for 20% off your order. And if you're looking for a business to support during this time, it seems like a good idea. A little bit of a tradition around here is Zach takes over, puts us through a trivia quiz. Zach, what do you got for us on Boogie Nights? What, what did you dig up? What did you Dirk dig up for us? Oh, boy. Oh, boo. Ladies and gents, I'm going to start you off with an easy one. Uh, it's interesting because we only have two people today. I feel like I might be able to dip into some other formats. You know, maybe some true false, maybe some high low. We'll see. Um, question number one, which of the following actors was not offered the role of Eddie Adams or uh, Dirk Diggler? A, Leonardo DiCaprio. B, Matt Damon. Or C, Joaquin Phoenix. You can go ahead, Dylan. I or yeah, I I know the answer. Ah, damn. Okay. Ben, ben did a little little extracurricular research over here. He's done this before though, where he knows the answer and got it wrong. That was a firecracker so, that I threw. I'll break it. I'll break down my thought process. I guess. I like that. Joaquin later goes on to be in The Master and Inherent Vice with Paul Thomas Anderson. So that makes me want to say that he did get offered this, perhaps. So then that would be between Leo and Matt Damon. Goodwill Hunting was what, 96? Like right around there? So this this makes me think it's a little early. Leo, I think, had Grapes of Wrath before this. Which, I mean... Granted, this is nothing like Grapes of Wrath. So. <laughs> um, Are you thinking Grapes of Wrath grapes or of what's, rat. What's, what's Eating, eating Gilbert Grape? What's Eating Gilbert Grape? Yeah, sorry. Not Grapes of Wrath. Different grapes. Oh, uh, what a great response. Grapes of Wrath. Slightly Wait, different movie. On. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's a very different movie from What's Eating Gilbert Grape. Um, I'm going to say Leo. Ooh. It is Matt Damon. He originally Damn. offered it to Leonardo DiCaprio. Leo was already signed on to do the Titanic. So well, my thought Phoenix process Leo was recommended right. Leo recommended yeah. Mark Wahlberg, and Joaquin Phoenix turned it down because he didn't something about he didn't want to be known for being the guy in the porn movie. Yeah, it's too much sex and violence in the movie for Joaquin Phoenix, who would later go on to star in The Joker. Uh, there's not much sex in there, but <laughs> you know. Just enough. Just a tasteful amount, I guess. <laughs> All right, so yeah, Ben did get it correct. That is uh, one point for Ben. Uh, question number two. It's a movie about the porn industry, so you knew I was going to hit you with something like this. Um, adult film star Nina Hartley, who again plays William H. Macy's uh, character's wife in the movie, uh, she brought everybody copies of her films as gifts on set. Um, what film did she present to William H. Macy? <laughs> was it A? Uh, hang on. <laughs> oh, no. I want you to know, I didn't oh, make up no. any of these. These are all her films. You just need to figure out which one she gave to William H. Oh, Macy. I can't no. wait. I can't wait till we get the supercut of Zach not being able to read any of these names. 
flash like the, flashback the, to food fight. Like the daddy, you're clean now. <laughs> daddy, you're clean now. All right. Ah. Uh, a go fuck myself six. <laughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. B the guide to anal sex. <laughs> or C <laughs> Or C <laughs> <laughs> He one. can't He already can't this is the good one. <laughs> that or, must, must mean this is the funny one. Or C, I fucked you and yo mama three. <laughs> uh, All C. pulled from Nina C. Hartley's IMDb, by the way. C. Uh, I didn't I'm make up any with, of those. I'm going with C. I fucked you and yo mama three. <laughs> it says I fucked you and yo mama three. I'm going to go with, with B. What was it? The... Nina Hartley's guide to anal sex. The guide to anal sex, because you know she has an William ass H. In her cock. Yeah, William. She needed to make sure William H. William H. Macy understood that it was very difficult to get an ass in her cock. Uh, it apparently is very difficult to get an ass in your cock. Um, from what I've read online, the studies that I've read, um, and that is correct. Ben must have definitely done his studying up on the Nina Hartley IMDb page because he is Damn. killing it. No, I just use context clues. You know, what porn what the porn industry is all about. Puns and context clues. Well that's why I thought it was you and your mama, because she's <laughs> she's fucking everybody out here. Oh my god, the scene where she's just in the backyard and there's like twelve dudes just standing, standing around, around. Her watching her get plowed and like you see this group of men. You're embarrassing me. <laughs> Honey, what are you doing? Like again? All right, uh, so that gives Ben a two-point lead and uh, more or less wraps this thing up as we head into question number three. So this is an episode where I feel like we've really been able to go back to our roots with the simping and the cucking and, and, and the shaming. Um, so I wanted to take us one step further closer to our roots No, with question no, number three. No, 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 it's inflation. It's inflation and I don't want it. <laughs> Even further to our roots, believe it or not, question number three is... How many actors have appeared in both Boogie Nights and the Jurassic Park franchise? Is it A, 2, B, 4, or C, 6? All the way back for our longtime listeners that were able to hear that very rare Jurassic Park episode number one. This one's for you. It's about 88 people. Now it's available on Patreon. Or you can just ask me for it. Let's grab our NTF or NFT. Sorry. Yeah, it's available as an NFT. <laughs> you so I guess not all of you can have it. Only one of you can, but you can like sell it to other people. We'll make we'll make Jurassic Park tokens with different clips of the of the episode. So then you have to collect them all. Yeah. If you want Give all different the pieces. Yes. Like Exodia. <laughs> <laughs> the forbidden the forbidden episode. <laughs> the forbidden episode. <laughs> Uh, you said two, four, or six? Yes. So, um, I don't think you're going to sweep because I I don't know the answer to this. I can think of two for sure, so I'm just going to go with with two. Is it just the original Jurassic Park? No, it's the entire franchise. Okay, okay, okay. I want to say Nina Hartley was in one. <laughs> <laughs> She played the Tyrannosaurus Rex in the first one. She was, let's be honest, she was the bone digger. We know it. Um, what'd you say, Ben, two? I said two. Two? Um, I'll, I'll go with the, the big boy and go six. It is the little boy. It is two. Uh, is it William H. Macy uh, and Julianne Moore? Yes, William H. Macy, who made his first appearance in Jurassic Park 3 and oh, will and be Julianne in Jurassic in Park Dominion in 2022, so look out for that. And Julianne Moore was in Jurassic World. No, the, the, Lost World. the Lost World. Yeah, The Lost the second World. One. Yeah. Dang. I couldn't even think of any of them. Then once you were like, William H. Macy, I was like, oh yeah, and Julianne Moore's in the other one. Okay. William H. Macy played the shitty dad in the third one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, the simp. <laughs> I, really, he just he plays that it's character so simp. well. He does. He's a great simp, and in this in this movie, he shows his true cuck ability. <laughs> yeah, he really unlocks well, that I think, I I think his wife shows his true cuck ability. <laughs> A few times, like three times. Well, she she brought out his his real like the the inner abilities of him. Like you think he would yeah. have been able to commit murder had she not been boning other dudes? No, she did unleash him in his final form. Dude, you fly too close to the sun, man. Some dudes Dick- can't hang. Dickerous. <laughs> Dickerous. <laughs> Cuckerous. <laughs> the Sympasaurus. Cuck. Fuck too close to the sun. Cuckerous. He. Yeah, yeah. His his wife fucked too close to the he, sun. He cucked around and found out. <laughs> oh, All right, there's the Instagram man. <laughs> Just the string of cuck and simp puns. Uh, at oh at William God. H Macy okay. on that. <laughs> Tag him. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tag him. Pod. I'll tag him from me and Bill Simmons. Say, hey, William H. Macy. From me and Bill Simmons. <laughs> Which reminds me, we have to get to the mean, Bill Simmons interview. You mean He's waiting here? You mean Bill? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Bill. Bill Simmons. <laughs> you call him that to his face? No. Oh no. 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 He's a powerful man. I'm just a lowly boy. Lord. Okay. Well, um, I'm the only one who has seen this movie. Uh, so would you guys like to go first, or would you like to hear my updated rating? Um, Hang on a second. I might be able to find a Bill Simmons soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> if you just, could just get a clip that says, it was good. It's just <laughs> like Boogie just, Nights, it was good. <laughs> but, but it has to sound like it came from a bunch of different things. Like It just has to be like, Boogie Nights, it was good. It's just a bunch of Celtics quotes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we, we have uh, Bill Simmons here on the pod. Thanks for joining us, Bill. Um, and we, we reached out to you because we know you're a huge fan of Boogie Nights, and we're a, a moderate fan of yours. So we thought we'd let you come on the pod and talk about the movie. So do you do you have anything to say about uh, Boogie Nights? Whoa! <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, jeez. I, I mean, but, uh, I was excited too at certain parts, but uh, don't know if I was that excited. <laughs> the only button that works is whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All the other buttons and, don't and work. And thanks for coming in, Bill Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> the other buttons don't work. Uh, I wonder if he's on Cameo. You should just pay for a Cameo. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Wow! Hold on, just get some clips of his uh, 2K20 audio. I'm sure we can splice some in there. I had seen this movie going in, and I give it an 8 out of 10. I think it's really well done. Um, the cast is amazing. The story takes you on a roller coaster. Highs the highs. You win in some AVNs. I don't know if it was called that back then, but uh, and then you win some lows of the lows. Well, you don't win them, but you hit the lows of the lows when you're uh, sucking dick in a parking lot, or I guess just jerking off. But um, man, it, the cinematography is it's interesting. It's it's really well done. It's a bold sophomore feature, uh, as we said. Uh, hey, we're going full porn here. <laughs> um, going full bush. Going going full Kate Bush. Um, sorry, Fiona Apple. No, full Sophia Bush. Yeah. It the the content of the movie might be a bit much for some people, but I do highly recommend it. Uh, I'm gonna leave it at an eight. It's solid, but it's not my favorite PTA movie. Um, check it out. It's on HBO. Yeah. I was kind of skeptical um, when, you know, all... Because that... Bill talked it up so highly to you, right? Well, just, you know, so Whoa. long so long ago when we decided we were going to try to beat The Ringer to this movie. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I was just kind of... We did, by the way. I, I was just 
kind of skeptical about the actual, you know, basis for the movie, the content, whatever. Um, and even in watching the movie, I, I was shocked at really how it revolves around the porn industry and yet is not a movie really about the porn industry. Um, it's a, it's does a great job making this a movie driven by the characters and what happens in their life, the ups and the downs going through their success and what happens when that kind of run is at an end. It was a little long, not going to lie. There were times where it felt a little long. Boom. There you go. I'm just going to... All that to say, it is still (laughs) R-rated as far as the sexual content in the film. Yes. There is a lot of... uh, Yes. Apparently there's 45 seconds of the movie that... That got cut to to make it... Yeah, it was continuously given an NC-17. And, like, Paul Thomas Anderson had to send it back, like, 10 times. And ultimately they cut out, like, 45 seconds of the movie to make it R-rated. 45 (laughs) seconds. Yeah. (laughs) Over... Overall, I wonder what happened. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Overall, um, I gave it a seven and a half out of ten. It's a bit long, hard to swallow at times. Boom! Did it again. Um, <laughs> so wow. the but that forty-five come, seconds was a lot of Nina Hartley scenes. <laughs> Just staring down William H Macy in the bedroom <laughs> while she while she puts a, a, a and, ass in her cock. Yeah, exactly. But. Yeah, I, I like this movie. Um, I, I'm i going to say up front, I don't think this movie is for everyone. That's a given. But if it's something that sounds like a movie you'd want to give a watch, give it a watch. I don't think you'll be disappointed by the movie. Uh, it was good. I'd probably watch it again in the future. Um, yeah, 7.5 out of 10. Uh, so I was extremely hyped to see this movie. I've heard a lot about it, and for some reason, I just never took the time to sit down and watch it, and I'm I'm glad I did. I'm going to come out and say it. I'm going to give this movie a 9 out of 10. This movie uses, like, the porn industry almost like a character. It's there for, like, comic relief when you need it in a movie that's very serious, that's about, like, trying to find your friends and family and being confused in the world. Um, I think... The movie does a fantastic job. Uh, there wasn't a single time when I was watching it where I was like, oh, this is kind of droning on, or maybe they could have done this differently. I thought everything was just about perfect. The reason it doesn't get a 10 is just because the porn industry plays such a big character in the movie that if you're not interested in sitting down for two and a half hours and watching a good amount of genitalia, you will not like this movie at all. Other than that, fantastic movie. 9 out of 10. Check out the show notes. Get that margarita recipe. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to rate and subscribe. Share us with your friends and family. Obviously, this was not safe for work episode, so uh, maybe Are warn people them? before <laughs> you, you Are send any of our away. episodes not explicit? Uh, no, some of them are now. Yeah, no, I've I've been I, doing it the ones that are like heavily like laid in. They all are. <laughs> every <laughs> every episode that we simp shame Dylan has to put the explicit tag. Yeah, buy some straws. Straws are dope, man. We don't have anything lined up for next week yet. It'll be there. It always is. Every Tuesday, check out Cocktails of Classics. Amen. Share us with your friends and family, and as always, watch responsibly. Guys, boogie nights. Number one rated movie so far in season three.